Hi, I'm Mikhail McCracken from Pet School. I'll help you raise calm, happy and well behaved dogs. I love helping you out. And today I'm going to answer a question that a lot of you have, which is, should I let my dog sleep on my bed? So first of all, I'm going to talk about when you shouldn't have your dog on your bed. If you're a light sleeper and you're going to wake up every time your dog twitches or snores or rolls over, if your dog isn't toilet trained and can't get themselves off the bed to go to the toilet, if your partner hates having your dog on the bed, that's a discussion for another day. If your dog won't move when you ask them to. Now there are still people, there are a lot of people who believe that if you let your dog sleep on your bed, it will lead to dominant behavior. Now I don't buy into that. I don't agree with it. However, if your dog guards your bed and will growl or bite you when you try to move them or get them off the bed, then we have a bit of a problem. Now, it doesn't mean that they're dominant. It just means that they're guarding a prime location. So we'll talk about resource guarding now. So when, when dogs guard locations, it's the same as when they're guarding um, food or a toy. They move through a progression of body language. And if you ignore the really subtle cues, they'll move to the more obvious cues. So a subtle cue might be if you go up to your dog who's on your bed and you ask them to move and they freeze, they just get really, really stiff and still. And then another Another thing they might do is do a hard stare and it might not be directly at you. It might be at the wall or at the floor, but it's hard and they're very, very stiff. Then the next thing they'll likely do is a growl and then they'll do a snarl, which is where they do a little lip curl that goes along with the growl. Then they'll do a snap, which is like a bite, but they're deliberately missing you. It's a really strong warning cue. And then if you ignore that, they might bite you. And a dog who learns that biting works, or if they bite, you're going to back off and let them stay on the bed. If they learn that that works, they're going to go straight for the bite the next time. So you need to be able to understand your dog's body language to figure out how they're feeling. So at any time in this progression, if your dog is going through these little body language signals, try not to growl them because they are telling you in every way they know how that they're really unhappy with the situation. So what we want to do is teach them that there are real benefits to giving up their spot on the bed. And it might not just be the bed. I'm talking about the bed today, but they might sit on the sofa or on your favorite chair or where, wherever it is that they particularly like these techniques will work in that scenario as well. So the first thing we want to do is prevent them from accessing the bed, except at training times. So you might just need to keep them out of the bedroom for a while if you need to work on this. And we're going to create a comfortable space for them, a really, really lovely bed for them. And you're going to teach your dog to go to their bed. And I will put a link in where you're watching this, I'll put a link to my training for that so that you know how to work through that. And then you're going to teach your dog to come when called. So what you're doing here is you're giving them an opportunity to get it right and an opportunity to get rewarded every time they get it right. So if your dog is on your bed, you call them to you, you reward them for that. You tell them to go to their bed, you reward them for that. And what they're going to learn is that doing what you ask is way more beneficial than sitting up on the bed and growling and snarling because that's not very fun for anyone. So if your dog is guarding your bed, you do want to work through those steps and you don't want to allow them to sleep on your bed. Now, why should you let your dog sleep on your bed? Because people... People get quite anxious about this. They think they're going to spoil their dog or they're going to ruin their dog or their dog's going to try and take over the whole household. So I just wanted to put this into perspective if that's how you're feeling about your dog 
and obviously if you're in a relationship there's there's often two different viewpoints on this and it can get it can turn into quite a heated debate so for me I love having dogs and cats on the bed and all of the doggy guests who come and stay with me through my overnight pet sitting service they do sleep on the bed but that said none of them guard the bed none of them growl at me and they'll all move when I ask them to plus they all get on with the cat so everybody's all happy on my bed <laughs> Now, little Pickle, who comes to stay with me, you'll see her in a lot of my pictures. She's a little black Brussels griffin. She's such a crack up. Every night she that we go to bed, she'll get into my spot first. And then she gives me this little eye, this little look as if to say, is it, you know, am I going to get away with it this time? And she never does. I just pick her up, put her on, on the other side of the bed. She's totally fine with it, but she always tries it on. It's really, really funny. And sleeping on the other side of the bed is hardly a punishment. She's still on my bed. So she's just a bit of a crack up. But I love having them on the bed. I think we all sleep better. We all sleep longer. And Sometimes if you wake up from a really crappy dream, it's just really nice to have somebody to cuddle <laughs> or a little fuzzy paw to hold on to. Now, also, some of my clients who have gone through the Calm Puppy course, they like having their puppies sleep on the bed because it means they get to sleep in longer. And I'm a huge fan of sleep. I've had two babies, two human babies who have kept me awake for years. So I will do anything to get a longer sleep. Um, but like I said earlier, if any of the dogs who came to stay with me showed any sort of aggression around the bed, if they guarded it from each other or from me or from the kids, it would be an absolute no-no and they would be sleeping on the floor on their bed. Now, do you want your dog to sleep on your bed? Because it's up to you. Everyone's unique. Your dog's unique. You're unique. And you get to make that decision without anybody else casting judgment. So... It really depends on what you can tolerate and yeah I mean if you're not having any trouble and your dog's sleeping through the night and you're sleeping through the night I don't see any problem with that if you are having behavioral issues it's unlikely to be a result of them sleeping on the bed but there are other things that you can work on throughout the day to just establish yourself as their leader and that you are the one who has the resources and you can also teach your dog that they have to wait to be asked up onto the bed so maybe you give them an up command or an on command something like that so that they're allowed on the bed but only when you say it's okay so I hope you found that useful I hope that if you are struggling with that and you're trying to decide or maybe you're arguing with your partner um, I hope that this helps you figure out that it is okay in most cases for dogs to sleep on the bed with you. Now there's still time to register for my masterclass, Five Puppy Raising Mistakes You Can't Afford to Make. And I would love for you to join me if you're struggling with your puppy and thought puppy parenting would be a bit easier and more fun. If you wanna raise a dog who you can take anywhere or trust to leave alone at home. If you want ways to feel less overwhelmed with your puppy's antics, so things like biting, jumping, toileting all over the place, or whatever particular behavior your puppy does that drives you a bit bonkers, then I'd love for you to join me in the masterclass. I'm gonna teach you how to quickly and effectively move through the messy and chaotic parts of puppy parenting so you can get to the good stuff. The blissful walks, the belly rubs, the cuddles on the couch, all of that good stuff that you signed up for when you got a puppy. So if you're struggling at all or if you're curious to learn how you can make your puppy journey easier, click the link where you're watching this to save your seat. I would love to see you there. That's it from me, you guys. Have a lovely week.